Hi, I'm Terry Kolath. I'm here today with Dick Brown of Parkwood. We're talking about one of his upcoming presentations at the Academy. This one is a special lecture, Masters of Deception and Illusion. Thank you for joining me, Dick. A pleasure, a pleasure, Terry. Well, this is, this is kind of intriguing, Deception, Illusion, Masters of them. How did you get involved in this? Well, last fall, I was in Leevarden, Holland, which is the uh, birthplace of Escher, an artist about whom I've had just a, a love affair since I was a kid. And uh, um, Leevarden was named as the European Cultural Capital of the Year for 2018. So they had all kinds of special events, including a special exhibit of, uh, of Escher. And so my son and I went, and they rolled out the carpet for us. And I learned some things that I'd never learned before. And I said, I got to go back and talk about Escher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what happened is I got thinking about the lecture. I said, you know, there are lots of artists from many countries and from many centuries that have deceived us with their art. They've had illusions and deceptions, and wouldn't it be fun to include not just Escher, but lots of people? And so that's what I've done. And how does that happen? How did that happen that so many artists took that turn? I really don't know that. All I do know is the results are so immensely satisfying to the viewer. You look and you see one thing, and then suddenly you say, oh my goodness, there's something else. So it's, it's like they take their artistic talent to another level. And they, they really do. And I've got several examples I can show the, the viewers. That's wonderful. That's what's going to happen in the lecture? Well, in the lecture, I've got just tons and tons of, of, of artists from around the world. Different. Uh, I'll have some that uh, have done uh, impossible images, some of them whom have done dual images. I will show... Uh, uh, Street art, for example, some amazing images of the streets in, in uh, France uh, done by a French artist. Uh, I'll do some uh, uh, shadow art that the Japanese are very fond of. I mean, all, we run the gamut, and all of it is vastly entertaining. That's very exciting. <laughs> well, give us some examples. I will. Let, well, let's start right with the impossible images. And, and most people have seen Escher's uh, Infinite Waterfall. Mm -hmm. And if you just look, you see the water going over the waterfall, mm -hmm. and then you watch it go down the trough, make a couple turns around the trough, and the next thing you know, <laughs> it's falling over the waterfall again. How does he do it? It is incredible. It is. And, and I'll show several of these by Escher and try to reveal how he gets away with his secret. Uh, here's another. Uh, this is, uh, by the way, Escher was Dutch. Uh, Sandro Del Preet is a contemporary uh, Swiss artist. Mm. And if you look at the bottom of this print, uh, you'll see what it looks like an ordinary chessboard with, uh, you know, the rooks and the knights and the, the queens and the kings and so forth. But you have these unusual ladders. And if you uh, let your eyesight go up, you'll see that the ladders are really going up to an upper plateau where you have the black soldiers on the ch chess field who are fighting off the, the people down below. Yeah, so the surface, which at the bottom looks like you're looking at the top of a chessboard, as you look up at the top, you say, oh, it's the, uh, it's the bottom part of some, some higher plateau. It's really kind of interesting. It is, and it's not only interesting, the technique, but how does somebody even imagine to I, do something like I that? I don't know how these artists even thought of such things. I mean, it reminds me somewhat of some of the musicians. How do they, how do they think this way. Right, right. Well, all right, this one. Oh, this is a Canadian artist, Rob Gonzalez. You won't believe this. So here we have these boys swinging. Uh -huh. Now, I want you to look at the picket fence. Now, I'm going to gradually reveal the bottom part, and you tell me what happens. He's swinging extremely high. <laughs> so you look at the picket fence, and as the bottom is revealed, it becomes a row houses with even a little church in here. And all the leaves on the ground morph into the, tree. the, the trees. So <laughs> really way up over the treetop. Like a boy's imagination when he's swinging. I, I know. It's just like that. And, and Rob Gonzalez has done so many of these. I'm going to show probably eight or ten of them. Just amazing works where you look at it one way and then you reveal the whole work and you say, you sit back and say, oh my golly, how does he do it that? It is incredible. I know. <laughs> let's fun. Let's look at this. This is by Victor Moloff. Uh, he's a, uh, a, uh, an artist from Russia. 
Now, he's talked about this ornithological symphony, and his composer is this guy. Can you see who it is? Beethoven. That's Beethoven, all right. Let's blow up Beethoven and see why Victor Moloff calls it an ornithological symphony. Here we go. <laughs> Beethoven has turned into a whole lot of oh, birds. I mean, look at and, and it's just the, the gesture I, that look, he usually I, usually. Thinks. I know. And we got a pelican. We got oh, like all these crazy <laughs> birds. It's amazing. <laughs> Really so we're going to do some Victor Molas, and and here's a, here's another one. Uh, this one right here is by a, a Mexican artist, uh, Octavio Ocampo. Beautiful. And, and what do you see here? A beautiful woman. A beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else there is to see. <laughs> I'm going to blow this up. Okay. Get ready. Three birds going into a nest. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It really is. You got these birds going into a nest here, the little the chicks waiting for to be fed. So the beautiful woman's profile suddenly becomes on another view as you expand it. But the lip going. is still beautiful, the eye is still beautiful. <laughs> it's all there. <laughs> Isn't it fun? It's amazing. Oh, let's take a look at this one. Oh, the same artist. Octavio uh, Ocampo, and here we have uh, his uh, uh, his vision of uh, Don Quixote. Okay. Okay. And here we are. We got Don Quixote and his wild, wild hair and mm -hmm. his sort of long goatee and Mustache. the heavy eyebrows. Let's look again. Well. It's not just Don Quixote on a donkey, it's Sancho Panza alongside of him. And the heavy eyebrows become the hats. And the, and the head becomes <laughs> the part of a, of a windmill. The, 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 the wild hair we saw a minute ago becomes part <laughs> of a windmill. And all these little visions of this crazy oh guy. My God. <laughs> Isn't it fun? Look at that. I know. <laughs> it really is fun. Oh, I think, their I, minds I think, are amazing. Yeah, I think I've got one more. Uh, let's see. Oh, I guess here we are. This is the street art of Felice uh, 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 Verini, who's a, a French artist who's done just amazing things. Now, while we're looking at this thing, we see some interesting ovals. But let me just tell you how difficult this was to do. Because if you look at the top here, you've got this top of the oval. Let's figure, let's follow it to the left. And the next thing you know, we're no longer on the front facade, but we're inside uh, an overpass, and then if we follow it further down the bottom, we're, uh, he's painted on a, on a building in the background. And then we come back through, and we're back again on the front facade. And you see the dimension. If you move, if the viewer moves from this point to another point, it all falls apart. Interesting. Nothing sort of fits together. Another question, what was it like having admired and been, been curious about Esther your whole life? What was it like to find out more about him? Well, uh, first of all, the exhibit uh, told so much about the personal life that you sometimes don't get if you just go to a gallery and sure. see the paintings. And so that was very, very interesting. Things that I didn't know about. Uh, one of the highlights for me and my son was Escher's most famous work, which was called Day and Night. Mm -hmm. and we saw the original, and then they treated us by taking us to lunch in the boardroom and putting that uh, original on an easel right in front of where we were eating. Was that a thrill? Well, people would be able to that see that. That was a thrill. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. <laughs> that really it's like meeting your boyhood idol I know. face to face. That's wonderful. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Very, very nice. Well, Dick, you're, as always, you're giving us an amazing treat with, with the insight that you can bring to it. Um, and, and just the fact that you were interested enough to do this and expand on it is going to enrich all of us. Terry, I can't tell you how excited I am to do this. It's going to be so much fun, not only for the viewers, but for me. <laughs> and, and it's a pretty full class, and we, we already know you've given us a promise to repeat it. So, yeah. if, so if you're not able to get into this class, we, we do have to have limits. And if you're not able to get into this class, it will come again. Next if you fall. If you are registered, don't forget to come. <laughs> so that you can enjoy something very unique and unusual with Dick Brown. Thanks, Terry.